In exchange, he demanded a high price, 50% of the conquered land. It was a hard bargain. Suddenly, it was Dandolo's crusade. This was outrageous. He was hijacking the crusade. But Dandolo wasn't interested in Jerusalem. He had another aim in mind. Dandolo's galleon led the fleet of 480 ships out of the lagoon on the morning of the 8th of November, 1202. At first, everything went according to the agreed plan, but then Dandolo changed course. No longer was Muslim held Jerusalem their destination. They would sail instead for Christian Constantinople. Fleet dropped anchor with Constantinople in their sights. Now Dandolo would put the final touches to his plans for revenge on the city that 30 years before had imprisoned him and so brutally decimated the population of Venetian traders living within its walls. The walls of Constantinople surrounded the city on the land side and all along the coast. Over the centuries, they had repelled attacks from the ferocious Bulgars, the bloodthirsty Saracens, and even the vast army of the Russians. The walls were the most impressive man-made defenses of any city in the world. The Venetians would launch their attack from the sea and from the land. At the base of the walls, the Crusaders fought with Byzantine soldiers and attempted to break the defenses with battering rams. This was brutal. Barbaric, bloody, murder. But it was clear there was only one answer. They had to go over the top of the walls. The attackers threw up scaling ladders they were easy prey for the Byzantine forces. And now a storm was blowing up. The Venetian ships were being smashed against each other. The battle was turning against them. It was then that one act of mad desperation turned the day. A man leapt to plant the Venetian flag on the shore. It was the doge. Enrico Dandolo. This roused the Venetians for one last great attack. They tied their ships in pairs and built towers on the decks. From the towers, they lashed wooden planks together as bridges onto the ramparts. The attackers had made it over the walls and into the city. Once inside the city walls, the Venetians spared no one. They murdered old and young. They raped women, girls, nuns. desecrated churches, 
they torch the city. This was a shameful victory for the Venetians. In the great church of Hagia Sophia, now a mosque, lies the tomb of the man who engineered it all. He changed the entire course of Venetian history and the history of the world. But now, almost no one visits his tomb. Doge Enrico Dandolo never made it back to Venice. But what he sent home would enrich my city and will change Europe for centuries to come. The Crusaders had destroyed so many treasures of the ancient world. And what the Venetians saved, they saved only for their own profit. The value of goods and money shipped back to Venice is impossible to calculate. Gold, silver, and jewels in immense quantities. The Basilica of St. Mark's became the greatest robber's den in the world an Aladdin's cave of stolen booty and plundered treasure. The opulent altar screen, the Palladoro, was re-embellished with jewels stolen from Constantinople. On the outside, the Venetians proudly displayed more stolen treasure. Great columns in finest marble. These fourth century Roman emperors are carved out of porphyry and originally came from Egypt. But the crowning glory from Constantinople was the four great bronze horses. The origins are lost in the mist of time. But legend has it, once they stood in ancient Greece, testimony to the artistic genius of the classical world. These statues were more artistically brilliant than anything Venice had ever dreamed of. A shiny example that Venetian artists would now seek to emulate. They were symbols of a new era for Venice. Venice stood on the brink of its golden age, richer and more powerful than ever before. It would become home to some of the most brilliant artists and architects the world had ever seen.